Hello everybody, this is Mia Feiler, long time no speak. I'm so happy to be here with you. This is a video talking about the lunar eclipse coming on the 18th in Pisces, its energies, and how to better deal with this transformative period that we're in. Now we're in a big transformative period. The world is changing. And this is demanding from us new skills, better skills, and to utilize more of our inner strength than ever before. It's challenging, and this time is especially challenging as Pisces. First of all, an eclipse, a lunar eclipse, brings on transformation on the emotional realm, subjective realm, how we see the world outside, how we characterize it, how we familiarize with it, and how we attribute these anonymous representations that we're met with to our personal worlds, our own tastes, our own beliefs, our own understanding. How to better bring emotional security and tranquility into the lives of our dear ones and ourselves. And a question of belonging nurturing and being part of a familial group whether it's biological or not so in Pisces we always have the feeling that we're separated from heaven that there's a dissonance between heaven and earth that as we remember that it was once above it is not below. This is, as Maurice Fernandez, my teacher, always says, the place that we have the greatest feud with God. How could this be this way? How do you allow the suffering and injustice to go on? And we feel most staunchly the separation from the source and being alone not only alone, powerless, impotent, against these massive, unchartable, not fully understandable, and certainly unexpected, colossal waves of evolution that we are faced with. We cannot anticipate, control, or truly understand the meaning of this oceanic current, if we're going to by see an analogy, that we're on. And this gives us a will and a craving to give up our own energies and efforts to say to ourselves, these currents that are driving me are so strong and immense. I'm just a drop in the water. I can take my hands off from my rose and let this current lead me wherever it will. The sense of martyrdom and being a victim to circumstances comes up. And we need to remember that although we're just drops in the ocean, we are drops of an elite group of souls living on earth right now come together who came together to bring on the change and transformation that is needed on earth and in the evolution of the humankind indeed the most important time that humans have ever lived probably the most interesting and challenging time too we chose to be here and together we can do it and we will. Don't give your hand to darkness, to fear, anxiety, trepidation, to despair. Don't let the tears of sorrow flow down on your cheeks without any 
tears of joy and gratitude because gratitude is the greatest and most feared weapon of the dark. Every night before I go to sleep, I thank creation for living amongst you, for breathing, for having a roof over my head and food in my fridge and a family that I love, a profession that I feel that I am in service in. And everything else, the beautiful tree out my out of my window gazing when I'm gazing out of my window and how the leaves rustle in the gentle wind how its fruits give parrots and bats their daily nutrition and just the immense magnificence of it and this awe this gratitude this thanksgiving is the strongest flame I know to chase darkness and fear. I try to do it through my days as well, and not only at night, and go through every moment indeed, fully knowing that it's never going to reappear, and it has never been here before. And I better make use of it because it's part of my life. And that includes when I'm washing dishes, sitting in the bathroom, or going down to throw the trash. Everything. Everything is special. That's the truth. The eclipse itself isn't Pisces, but the sun shining on this full moon isn't Virgo, the complete opposite. Critical, perfectionist Virgo wanting to fix things more hygienically and correctly so we could live a better life. To stop the neglect, listen to the sun. It is wise. But don't let stress drive you into oblivion. Because when these Piscean energies are in the sky, all we want to do is forget and sleep and go on vacation and take a pill and drink something and smoke something. Just... I don't want to be in touch with reality. It's too much for me. That's the kind of feeling we get. And there's better ways like music and nature and meditation and spirituality to, you know, soothe things down. The moon is accompanied by two friends. Saturn on the one hand and Neptune on the other. And it is squared by Jupiter. So the square to Jupiter talks about updating in Gemini our belief system and the truth and how we see the world, our opinions. Saturn on the one side of the moon talks about the soreness of things. They're hard, they're heavy. They're depressing. They're real. They are so. That's their soness, as they say in Japanese and Buddhism. And until we realize, open our eyes and understand with our minds what it is we're facing, we don't really have any chance of cultivating it and making it any better because we're just spending our times in illusions. So, taking up responsibility and growing up and maturing, Saturnian words, standing staunch against these waves of Neptunian energy that make our seawall crumble down, bringing more stone and murder to fortify it with Saturn is important. Discipline. Self-discipline is important. Nevertheless, emotional warmth and support is as well. On the other side, Neptune in Pisces heightens this feeling of a dissonance with God, of a disconnection with Source, of powerlessness and impotence and martyrdom. 
and of course could heighten the connection we have to spirituality and music and nature as well. Don't get carried away and don't put your heels buried in the sand. It's a dance and it's dynamic. It's like a breath of constriction and letting go, constricting and letting go that we're dancing and it's all about surrender Pisces submission to these greater forces that we are that are upon us understanding that we cannot fully understand them and then after we submitted after we surrendered dedication dedication to this greater law to this greater force to this greater truth that is not about ourselves but about all of us dedication vestian dedication if you know what that means from the word vesta the asteroid and and uh, you know, like when a priest or a nun choose to live for God and really give up everything else, but gain so much more for their, for their own development, let's say, most of the time. So it's about giving up and giving in and then putting your hands back on the rows and adopting a rhythm, an inner rhythm that is like an inner metronome. It doesn't exhaust you, it doesn't let you stay in one place, and brings your own responsibility into correlation and alignment to the flow of the waters of time. So yeah, we can do it together and we will. Let's talk about the days that are coming. So we have this trine between Venus and Jupiter in the sky. Watch out from exaggerations, from enjoying yourself too much, spending too much money, eating too much sugar or sweets and so on and so forth, buying too many things. But be aware, this is a good time for love and a good time for increased finances. Try and build sustainably more relationships, more satisfaction, more contentment of this material plane that you're on and the people around you. Saturn is going to oppose Mercury on the 18th. This is a time of judgment. Don't be too hard. Remove the broom from your ass and the heels from the ground. But if there are important things that need to be maintained, guard them. Don't let the rules bend if they need to be there. On the other hand, the sun is trining Uranus. This is a time for upgrade. This is a time for change. This is a time to think outside the box. And this isn't so easy as Uranian energies accelerate us because Neptune is opposing the sun. And that brings a lot of lubrication to this rail that we're on, making it all wobbly, making us slow down and understand that there's no certainty right now. No one really knows where we're heading. Unfortunately, as an astrologer and a political advisor before to NGOs, I believe, and I hope I'm mistaken, that we're in the second act of four that began with the October 7th massacre that would be gazed upon one day by historians as the Chekhovian rifle on the wall in the first act. We're still just in the second. 
Right now, all we can do is heighten love, understanding, compassion between all people and animals on this earth. And the more love we sow, the harder it's going to be for darkness and fear to conquer. The stronger you will be. And I always tell my clients, even though we are in an oceanic storm and the sky is black and the waves reach the clouds, and your ocean cruiser is just, you know, tossed around by the waves. But in great dissonance, the lights in the cabin of that ocean cruiser are yellow and warm. And inside, it's cozy. And hey, sit down. I'm just about to serve dinner. And this is the kind of attitude that we should maintain in our lives when this chaos is at our doorstep. When uncertainty is at our doorstep, and indeed, the sun is going to try Pluto from the 21st, and we are going to find out again that our greatest reservoir of strength has always been, and always will be, in our hearts. And that this is the garden that needs cleaning and cultivation and better understanding and honor all through our lives. That this is true development. If you want to change the world, change your motherfucking selves. The world will change as a byproduct of our change. And leave God alone, you know. You can use the force, but the important thing is, force yourselves. That's how the universe works. Do your own work, then the universe can do his part, or its part. Not the other way around. Doesn't happen when we are idly sitting, murmuring about how bad things are. It happens when we take personal responsibility and make an effort. Venus is squaring Pluto from the 23rd, and this talks about transformation and challenge within monetary aspects in your life, financial aspects, satisfaction, and also relationships. Of course, relationships and partnerships. And that's it. <clears throat> Don't let anger or um, obsessivity guide you. Be flexible and try and float above these dramatic currents of emotion that we're in. Mercury is going to try in Uranus from the 24th, helping us to upgrade the way we think and understand things, make it faster, make it smarter, make it more futuristic and updated. But at the same time, Mercury is opposing Neptune, which increases anxiety, gives us the feeling of insecurity, and less validation and certainty in our lives to the fact, to the point that we can't really know already what is real and what isn't, like we had in COVID. That the truth is shrouded and hidden. Again, connecting to spirit connecting to community, connecting to nature, connecting to animals, connecting to children, connecting to yourselves is the prime directive. Honor through this time the sacred vehicle that you're on through this time. As your soul was squeezed into this meat glove that has five different senses to sense this world, Give it what it needs. Eat healthy food, drink enough water, sleep enough. Connect to love and loved ones and things that you love. For it is, again, the greatest weapon against apathy, desperation, and depression. If anyone wants to learn evolutionary astrology with me privately or in a group through Zoom, contact me. 20% discount right now for new courses and personal uh, uh, personal lessons and of course if you want a consultation with me contact me as well the 20% discount for that as well please. 
stay safe, stay well. Thank you for listening and spreading the message. It's been good to be here again. May I see you very soon, I hope. Amen. This is Nia Feiler. Wishing we all live long and prosper. Take care. Takoyo, yes.